Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech, and it's time to talk about the evolving world of education. Now, we know there are several constraints which create the large structural mismatch that we have in the country between supply and demand in the higher education sector. Uh, and it's uh, true also uh, when it comes to uh, primary education in the country as well. We've got a very unequal society. We know we've recently heard the highest Gini coefficient in the world, and government spends a lot of money on trying to ensure that we can solve for the education crisis. And the one thing we saw through the pandemic is that online offers a very low cost, valuable way to be able to touch and address um, students in a, in a way that many had suspected was possible. But certainly the proof of concept uh, was, uh, was seen for all through the pandemic. And my next guest will know all too well about the power of online education, Yandisa Nakaza, who's director of UCT Online High School. UCT Online High School, I've got to, uh, yeah, you see those two words together and you question what's going on here, Yandisa. Welcome. What inspired UCT to launch an online high school? Thank you for having me. Um, I actually remember when we, we, we launched, we had um, UCT students complaining that how can the learners, these people are in high school and they're already using the UCT brand that we had to work hard for um, to get here. So, uh, but UCT's agenda was really to contribute towards the basic education, ailing basic education um, system in the country and because the university experiences firsthand actually um, the, the dire situation we find ourselves in as a country when they receive their first year students um, and they have to spend a lot of money on programs catching these students up because they are just not at a level or standard that a first year student should be in um, and they, they, they've seen over the years that it's a recurring problem every year. In fact, it gets worse every year. Um, and the university then decided that they would like to contribute um, in a meaningful way to the, in, in the sort of high school um, education by getting involved and getting their hands dirty. And that's how the, the UCT um, online high school collaboration with Valencia Institute came about. It's a powerful brand that the UCT brand that, that you mentioned and students say, well, you know, we, we've got to work uh, hard to get to that point. It's also a very unique offering within the South African education sector, because here you've got a university um, that, that's lending the weight and institutional knowledge and heft of that brand to, um, to a high school mm -hmm. offering. What are the main benefits that an online offering provide over your more traditional schooling? Well, some obvious benefits would be, you know, the fact that you can learn from anywhere, right? You can be in the periphery in terms of geographic location. You don't have to be in a city. You can be in a farm. You can be in a rural area. You can be in a township. Um, so decentralizing high quality education and making it accessible to everyone everywhere is one of the really biggest um, positives or advantages. Um, but if you zoom a bit in, you'll find that um, outside of flexibility, um, which is also things that, I mean, that we have learners who are professional sports um, people. Some kids are actors, others are musicians, you know, so the flexibility um, that I can still learn, I can still catch up because the learning management system is accessible 24 seven, right? So if you can't make it during the day in completing some of your tasks, you can always dedicate that time later in the day, right? So the flexibility that it provides, um, but also more importantly, I think pacing, right? Um, it's individual pacing per child. So each child has the advantage of um, not having to follow the rest of the class in terms of where they are. So in a brick and mortar school, if we're doing fractions this week, that is what we are doing this week. Whether you understand fractions already, or you, you grasp the concept a lot quicker than the rest of the class, you have to sit it through. Um, and in this model, you move along, right? You, if you spend a day on, on fractions, the next day you've moved on to something else. So uh, it, it, allows, it allows learners to move at their own individual pace. Um, and, and we've also infused a mastery-based approach into the, into the learning management system where a learner cannot mark 
if they have not mastered certain concepts. Um, this is done through various assessments as they track uh, through the course. Um, and it, it proves powerful because when they have to write those formal assessments, they are guaranteed to pass because they've had plenty of opportunities to actually test their knowledge and see that they understand um, various concepts. So there's, those are just some of the sort of high level mm. um, advantages, Michael. I mean, even self-discipline, right? The fact that you are having to, to learn um, and wake up at a certain time, have the discipline to log in, have the discipline to take breaks, have the discipline to submit your assignments on time. You don't constantly have a teacher or teachers hovering over you, asking you to do. And Yandisa, I mean, those are those are some incredible benefits. I was one of those students who um, in early high school uh, would get really bored when the rest of the class had to be pulled along on certain concepts. And and so what do you do when you're bored and you're 14 years old? Well, you generally cause mayhem. And I think that can that can be one of the the, the downfalls of the traditional model is that uh, it doesn't allow that kind of individual tailored uh, approach that an online model does. And I'm sure, but mm. you've just almost answered the question, people must question whether or not the standard of teaching at an online high school compares with the standards at a traditional school. But what you've just said, uh, you know, is effectively the examination and the, the, the testing is really, um, I think, streets ahead of what you probably find at traditional schools, because you can have this more tailored approach. How do you see the two comparing? You know what, I think because we are in our early stages, right, in terms of the offering and offering it to, at, at, at such um, scale, um, we, we have, it's different. It's so vastly different and, and perhaps difficult to compare um, for now, but we are almost certain that it is far better because we have a team of learning designers who are professional teachers um, and subject experts. And these are the people that put the modules together by subject on the learning management system, um, on the learning platform itself. And that's how learners are able to navigate on their own this um, module on the, on, on the platform. And then we've got a group of teachers whose responsibility is to watch our dashboards and see who's struggling within their subjects. Um, so if I can pick up, for example, that there is a learner who's struggling with a particular concept in English or a group of learners that are struggling as a teacher in an online space, I'm able to log a call for a live session with those kids because I can see from the dashboard that they stuck there. Um, so the role of a teacher is so different in this context because you know, they intervene at the point of need. Um, when they are required, they, they can see when they are required to intervene, but also the learner has the opportunity to get stuck by themselves and to call on a teacher when they get stuck. So um, the, the roles are different, but also the advantages of our kind of teacher is that they over time get to understand the key concepts because it's data driven. The key concepts where learners, where learners struggle and they are able to sort of design the, the, either the content or the module differently in order to expand on, on how it is delivered because we have seen that a number of kids get stuck there. Um, so it's a very directed uh, way of teaching, which is incredibly empowering. Um, because teachers intervene where students are struggling. Well, it's it's data driven decision making, and I think every organisation, if you speak to them about business intelligence and they use dashboards and they're familiar with things like Hadoop and others, uh, what do you do? You you're trying to infuse inside the organisation the ability through dashboards to make the right decisions based on the data, not on a gut feel or on what your instinct might say. Those are important, but it, it certainly augments yeah. and helps the process. So I mean that's a really rich and, and, and fascinating insight. Uh, how many enrollments do you have so far? And uh, what sort of plans do you have in, in terms of future enrollment numbers? Because this is something obviously fairly new, as you say, it's still very nascent. Uh, what do the early numbers indicate? 
So, we, I mean, we've been surprised by the numbers. Um, they've really exceeded our expectations. So we had just over 10,000 applications um, and we have currently admitted 5,000 learners. And, and we've put a threshold deliberately, in fact, um, because we want to be able to control um, some of our learnings, make sure that we've got the right ratios for support coaches, teachers, uh, you know, so we, we, we're containing the number for purposes of making sure that our learnings um, and, and some of the assumptions we made going in are correct and, and make those adaptations. But our numbers are currently at 5,000. That's truly remarkable. And it just shows you how how much there is this unmet demand in the South African marketplace. Yeah. And I often chat to uh, Kuros and Stadios and all the listed players, and they, they keep on saying, Michael, there's runway for growth in this market. And it's so Absolutely. wonderful to see the innovation because it's an apex issue, isn't it? We need to get education right. If we do, so many other things in South African society start to come right in the future. Now, is there a limit, though? You know, when you look into the future and you say, right, there's a limit right now, and we've capped it at 5,000. You've, you've got technology which allows you to efficiently allocate resources based on need. Um, should mm. you go to look at the impact of something like this and say, right, guys, there's got to be a time we, we scale this even further? Absolutely. Um, we think our numbers are going to grow incrementally um, in the next two, three years, potentially looking at 150,000 students um, in the next three years. So we, we know that it's going to grow uh, because there's a, there's a big market and our kids, whilst majority are in South Africa, um, we've got a lot in the Southern African region as well. So it expands, beyond, you know, extends beyond um, um, South Africa. But yeah, those are the sort of short term numbers that, mm. that we're looking at. Um, and we, we just really want to lock in the key lessons before we can expand to that extent. Yeah. And um, in terms of costs, uh, is the, the learning management system zero rated for data? And, and how does this really compare at a headline level with the cost of a traditional or high school um, alternative? Yeah, so not yet zero rated, but that's something we really are considering um, to expand access uh, to people who ordinarily would not actually be able to, to afford it. So it is something we, we prioritize. Come on, Vodacom or MTN or Telcom, here's your opportunity to partner with a great initiative. Come on. Please. <laughs> It is a great opportunity to partner um, and we really, really would love to, to partner in that way. Um, and I mean, your other question, what was it, Michael, um, you how, asked how about? It, I mean, at a headline level. So if I were to enroll my, um, my daughters who are now in primary school into the UCT online alternative versus going to a brick and mortar school, how do those costs stack up? Look, we, we've tried to do comparisons. So if you look at a former Model C public um, school, we, we, we're not far off. In, we're probably in line with some of you know, the good public schools, um, if not below. Um, if you look at your King Edwards, Parktown Boys, Hyde Park High School, you know, those sort yeah. of um, public schools, we, we, we probably plus minus around the same price point. But then also you need to consider some things like uniform, right? That mm, um, yeah. you don't spend on uniform, you don't spend on transport, you don't spend on uh, several other things that you would if your child was in a school. Um, also your stationary requirements are significantly reduced because learning happens online. Um, but then you also have your once off costs like the device itself, um, which will last you, what, five years, which is the duration of your child's high school. So, yeah, we, we, yeah, I think we, we're fairly competitive um, mm. and, and mm. yeah, one of the most affordable private schools in the country. Uh, what has the response, and this is critical, been like from the learners? Because um, on the one hand, uh, I'm sure they love the fact that they don't have to wear school uniforms every day. On the other, do they miss out potentially on some of the social interactions? Uh, what has the response been like? 
It's been great. It's really been great. And we've been seeing a lot of um, hangouts, meetups, you know, parents are amazing. They organize um, all of these sessions so that they can actually make in-person connections and friendships. And, um, you know, the, the, the school is across the country, you know, so parents will gather if they are in Centurion, Pretoria, Durban, Bloemfontein, um, they will create those opportunities for the kids to actually meet each other. Um, and of course, I think because learning online, like working online, can get lonely because you don't have those regular conversations. Um, and yeah, so learners are also experiencing some of that, which is why it's so helpful that parents are actually um, quite involved in creating um, those interaction points for the kids. And it's something we've deliberately asked parents to be, um, you know, conscious about and to actually actively uh, work on because we, we understand that human connection is critical um, and, and kids need to be able to interact with other, with other kids. So they, yeah. they've had a great time. We have the school song. Um, we had these great South African artists that um, wrote our school song. So that's also been a very good way of um, forming community and belonging and feeling like we are all part of this one big movement. So it's been, it's been wonderful. Yeah. And it, I mean, the power of online was best described to me by John Olyphant. He was the former principal officer of the Government Employees Pension Fund. He now has a swanky office in Sandton on a corner of a very high <laughs> building overlooking Discovery, running a, a private equity fund called Third Way Capital. But, you know, when I interviewed him years ago and I said, John, you know, how did you, you know, how did you get into this field? And he says, well, I ended up studying to be an actuary because of um, how I grew up, actually. He was uh, he grew up in a very poor community in the Free State, and um, his uh, maths marks were so good that he graduated uh, with a bursary to be to study actuarial science. I said, well, how did you do that in a school where the pass rate for maths, I think, was 30%? He said, do you remember Will Smith? And I was like, no, that Will Smith, the guy who used to teach. I was like, yes, Will Smith. He had the TV show on SABC. He said, Will Smith. Oh, yeah. Taught, taught me how it taught me maths and science. My Google uh, every Sunday would, would put two rand away so I could go and get the Sowetan, which had all the proofs. And he ended up teaching wow. his, his fellow classmates. That is the power that online offers. I mean, that was the first, I call it the first online offering in terms of TV <laughs> massifying um, access to really good quality education. Uh, and so it just follows that this has to be the future. It really is exciting. And speaking of future plans, what are your future plans? Can you give us uh, an insight under the lid? Yeah, I mean, we've got plenty. Um, and I think right now, our main, our primary focus is really to, to solve for the teething issues, to learn from what's going right and what's going wrong, to improve the platform, to create great customer experience, and of course, to then grow it and make it more accessible to, to the wider um, global community. And yeah, so, so we, we're quite focused on, on, on what we already have and making sure that we, th there's going to be a lot of iterations on our current offerings. So that, that's where our focus is. Um, but beyond that, uh, well, we haven't, we haven't thought that far yet. We just want to make sure that what we have here um, works and works beautifully. That's the way to do it. Walk before you can run. Yandisa Nakaza, Director of UCT's online school. It's been a great pleasure sharing uh, your journey so far in this very exciting world that really is all about democratizing access to good quality education. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.